a lot unfolding. All of us waking up with heavy hearts today. What is your take on what happened in Dallas last night? I think it's a game changer. It's a game changer for law enforcement. And when I say game changer, this is a precedence that's been not uh, occurred in the United States for many, 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 many years. This is a full-fledged assault on police officers, specifically, even though there were two civilians that were shot as well, mm -hmm. which then causes law enforcement throughout the country, given the atmosphere that law enforcement is literally under the gun for the use of deadly force against minorities, so on and so forth. So having said that, law enforcement now has to take a look at how it delivers its forces to demonstrations like this, and they're going to have to start to do counter surveillance and counter snipers uh, procedures relative to where a demonstration might occur, where it might go. And the bigger picture here is the fact that in this country, we literally had an individual or individuals want to kill police officers simply because they're police officers. If that continues, we could be on the precipice of perhaps uh, anarchy. Wow. Um, you know, how your former police chief, what would you tell police officers who now have to go to work? Because this, again, it could happen anywhere. We don't know if it's just going to be an isolated in in incident in Dallas. Um, how do you give them the courage to go out on the street to continue to perform their duties? You know, it's interesting. It's a, it's a very good question. Um, Believe it or not, law enforcement officers throughout the country already have that courage. They already understand that on any given day, at any given time, uh, something of not of this nature, but just danger in general occurs every day. They have that courage. What they have to do and what I would be doing if I was the chief of police, and I'm sure many, many chiefs are doing that now, assess how we deploy our officers, assess how we plan for these types of events. And I'm talking about demonstrations in particular because we have a constitutional issue here. Uh, I've heard people say, stop demonstrations, but you can't because we have the right for free assembly. So law enforcement has to now take a look at what can they do to prevent this from happening and mitigate that from happening. Our officers, the officers that I've worked for throughout my 30 year career were courageous. I never saw a coward officer and you're not going to see that now. It's just how do we do things differently mitigate what could potentially occur. My biggest fear, uh, copycats. And in fact, yeah, of course. this underlying uh, feeling of disenfranchisement, mm -hmm. of discriminatory practices by law enforcement, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. And then without getting into a political side of the house, you take a look at the FBI Director Comey's decision, and there are people out there saying the system's rigged. And then when you have minorities mm -hmm. and they're getting shot, whether it's justified or unjustified, the perception that it's not justified is creating this disenfranchisement. And I have to ask, so um, we just heard from the chief in Dallas, they're being very tight-lipped about who these suspects are. Of course, we know at least one of them dead. Where do they go from here? What is the next step here? Well, first and foremost, they need to understand completely why this occurred. And what I'm talking about, why did it occur? Understand who that individual is, their lifestyle, their life patterns, what they've been doing, what they've been reading, what they've been engaged in over the course of many months or if not years. This seed of discontentment that has translated into a homicidal act is very, very frightening because if this individual is of this nature, or individuals, because I believe there was more than one shooter, mm -hmm. uh, the issue then begs how many other individuals within our country are feeling the same mm -hmm. and that will continue to do this. So it, it's, it's a very complex situation that's all now gonna be ferreted out, but it's gonna take some time. The motive, is it a different ideology? Is it, is it the fact that this individual felt disenfranchised and felt there was no other recourse than to shoot police officers? Both of those, if there's an ideology behind this or if there's just this disenfranchisement that turns into a homicidal act, both of those are very, very dangerous. And when I say dangerous, it's dangerous for the public because if you start to shoot and kill police officers wantonly, then you and I, who are not police officers, are even less valuable to that individual. And when I say valuable, we don't have much meaning. Sure. Mm -hmm. We're looking at video from last night. Uh, we've seen it replayed so many times already this morning. In that situation, you see these police officers, men, women, running towards the violence. Was there any way for them to, to protect themselves? We see many of them without their vests on, without a, a, a 
guard or shield or anything running towards it. You, know, you have that gentleman right there, the police officer on the bicycle, all he's wearing is a bike helmet. Were there, was there any way for them to, to kind of protect themselves? This is a worst case scenario and the, the, the simple answer is absolutely not. Um, when you have snipers elevated and it's triangulated, that's what I believe thus far that there was more than one shooter, they're literally sitting ducks. And police officers are not trained to look up and they're not trained to deal with multiple shooters from different strategic positions. And so this is a new unfolding uh, dynamic that law enforcement officers are going to have to now start to deal with in reality. The U.S. military trains for this. However, United the, the law enforcement in the United States do not. So the tactics have to change as well. So you, you, hit, a, you hit a very interesting point. You talked about courage. Look who is running towards the gunfire. Sure. And, and naturally, you don't expect the public to be running towards the gunfire. <laughs> you want them out because yeah. the cops don't want anybody else being injured. And now, you, brought up, I'm sorry. Sorry. I mean, you brought up a good point when you said that um, the, the training would need to be different. But the police have already been criticized by appearing to look too military with SWAT armored vehicles, with all the extra um, safety requirements. Um, is Un there a fine line? I, I'm not sure if there's a fine line. I have to tell you, I, this is just a personal opinion, I, I don't think it's appropriate that law enforcement starts to gear up and look like military. They should like, look like police officers. However, their tactics, however their equipment, should be able to have some of the better equipment, the better, more sophisticated tactics to prevent this from happening or mitigate it. So. Is there a balance? Absolutely. I, I, I just don't understand why law enforcement needs to change its appearance as opposed to the badge and you know the regular uniform, so on and so forth, because they can wear their vests underneath their uniform, which I did for many, many years. So the bottom line is they need to mitigate the, the appearance while still gaining the, the intellectual and the training savvy to prevent this from happening. A lot of people are going to be talking about the big picture here. You know, this was a Black Lives Matter protest. It was very peaceful, but Black Lives Matter, really, they're trying to get a point across the fact that there is a divide between law enforcement and a particular community. Do you feel like here at home, here in South Florida, there is a divide between people in our community and law enforcement? I can't say in South Florida, now I haven't worked the streets in, in many years, uh, the flavor I get from my former colleagues is that no, there isn't this major divide in South Florida because South Florida has, has grown from its law enforcement tactics, its, its community policing, its outreach exponentially over the last 30 to 40 years. I don't see that disenfranchisement or hear about it here in South Florida. That doesn't mean it's not occurring. But based on what my former colleagues tell me, uh, that's not the case. And they're very astute and very prepared to mitigate that type of disenfranchisement. No kind of racial divide there. Not, well, l l there is always going to be that racial divide mm -hmm. that is perpetuated not necessarily by the actions of the law, law enforcement in South Florida because we haven't had this type of a shooting incident sure. for at least two or three years where it's questionable. Um, although it is happening throughout the, the United States. And those questionable shootings although we don't know all the facts about all of the things that occur in those shootings, um, they give the appearance that they're, they're not good shootings, and then right. that creates unrest. Is there any concern that because of the police now being attacked, that perhaps people who had considered joining the police force, any police force for that matter, uh, may take a step back and think, hey, I don't want to risk this? It's my understanding throughout the entire United States that um, retention and recruitment of law enforcement officers is more difficult than it's ever been. Wow. And this may make it harder. And this would be speculation as well. Would you imagine that um, police officers, police uh, departments in our area are taking steps today, having meetings with their officers, simply saying, you know, take extra precautions. Here's what we're going to do. We need to be in place, be extra vigilant. Are they having those conversations this morning? I would imagine, knowing many of my former uh, colleagues and chiefs of police, that they are and that they are seriously vamping up and revamping their policies. The other thing is that I think as a whole, you're going to see the chiefs of police in Palm Beach County, in addition to the sheriff, with Sheriff Bradshaw, his lead, along with the lead of many other chiefs of police, are going to come together, develop and create policies and training that will mitigate this.
Well, sir, thank you so much. We appreciate your time. Are there any last words that you'd like to say for uh, the police officers, the victims and their families this morning? Well, obviously, uh, I've lost a number of friends in my career in 30 years, and it is, it's horrific. Mm -hmm. it's, it's absolutely horrific, not only for police officers, but for anybody that gets shot. So if it's an individual that gets shot by the police, it's, it, it's horrific all the way around. And as law enforcement bleeds, so does our society. Yeah. You're right. Thanks for being with us. Really appreciated some insight there. And of course, we're going to learn more about this shooting in Dallas throughout the day. We'll be right back.